said, I got water on my damn shirt. <laughs> this morning. This morning I wanted to chop it up with y'all about, hold on a second. Let's get this out of here. Alright, so this morning I want to talk to y'all about how to unlock your talent and we're going to speak about that for a minute and we'll end this conversation after this morning where I wanted to talk to y'all about the next war in cyber and, the, and like the next war that's going to go on in the world dealing with like uh, electronics and cyber because it was a couple things that, that we got to pay attention to that a lot of us don't pay attention to. You know what I'm saying? So the first thing, I know a lot of people in the world, like, you know, they always tell us that everybody in the world has their own unique talents. And I tell people all the time, it's very true. But to have the talents and not to be able to unlock them is almost as bad as not having talent at all. Because we don't, we don't live in a world anymore where it's like people are, people are supposed to unlock their talents to get to the next level in life because we're occupied from choices we made, rather from, you know, raising kids, going to work, you know what I'm saying, or just never getting to what we were supposed to get to that we planned or that we dreamed from the beginning, you know what I'm saying? So this morning I wanted to have a conversation about how to unlock your dreams because I know sometimes it's just small conversation and ideas that go over our head that we need as reminders. Like even me, I needed them as reminders through the years or I might see something and, and it's always certain information that'll make a person feel real good or give them a certain light. So this morning, I think what's important, I was in the ring, y'all. I think what, what's important is that the first thing is to it is, is being able to stay true to what you love and not letting nothing deteriorate you from whatever the hell that it is that you're trying to do. Oh, wait, God, what is hell? Not letting it deteriorate you from whatever you're trying to do in life. And I say this because your biggest obstacles in this dream shit, and this step one, is the hardest part is being able to overstep and to be, be able to, around you is going to be friends and family or people that's close to you who they might not got the same dream as you, or might not understand why you got to go a certain direction to get to what you need to do. So in order to unlock your potential, you're going to have to be willing to go and exile a little bit to get where you need to go. And see, this this step one for me is the step, is, it's probably like the one step that stops most of it. It's, it's, it's the most important step because you can't manifest and you can't get to the next point in life or to whatever it is that you want to do if you don't learn how to block out people around you, right? And I learned as I got older, which I didn't have nobody to tell me that it's not always about, like, I, I grew to learn, like, yo, damn, you know, because we, as people, we'll get bitter about the shit. You know what I'm saying? We all got dreams and our talent, and we feel like, like, damn, the first thing we think naturally is that I, I'm going a, I'm to a build this, or I'm going to create this shirt, or I'm going to rap, or I'm going to sing, or, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to do this, and you, you, you instantly feel like I'm going to do this, but you start thinking like, yo, all right, I got my friends. I know that's going to support me. I got my family. I got these people. But when you get this invention on the ground and when this shit is moving, you're going to learn real quick that you're going to start feeling like, damn, these people are not going to invest or they're not going to fuck with me. And for for the people that's not the creator, it's a two-way street. Like the, the artist or that creator going to feel like, damn, nobody fucking with me, which a lot of people fold in this stage. 
because it's one of the hardest stages to get past, but you just got to know to stay focused, stay forward, and do not deteriorate. I mean, do not do not leave, don't, don't go left or right. As I always tell people, for me, that's what I call the tunnel theory, where the dreams is like this this tunnel, right? And uh, you enter the tunnel when you want to accomplish something in life. And see, at the beginning, you can walk at the beginning of your dream, and you can see the light behind you so you can turn around. I always express this to y'all. So at any given time, you can turn around. But if you make it past step one, you get to a second phase, which is that goes further than just what the people think around you. Now you got to get into where you're in the middle of the tunnel, right? Well, you're in a tunnel where you can see a little light, but you, you, you still don't see no light in front of you, right? So in the second phase, on the ground, the second phase is, all right, now you are already to maintain and try to learn how to understand that your friends and them don't owe you anything. And you realize that you have to make your product or whatever it is that you're trying to get to people you got to put it on their level or it got to reach them. Like, people got to acquire taste. Like, every person around you is certain shit that make them tick. You got to try to sit around. Like, as an artist, my stage two for me was like, instead of being mad at them, sit around your friends and your family and then find out what their acquired taste is. You know what I'm saying? I used to ride my homeboys or my, or, or my homegirls and shit. I'd be sitting in their car and I'd listen to what they listen to. And then that, for me, as an artist, would make me, would start helping me pick of what I need to be paying attention to. Like, I'll give you an example. I was on a corner... And one summer, I sold every woman I stopped that day. I probably sold like 30 CDs that day. Every woman I stopped this day, when they threw my CD in, they all ejected Ply CD. That instantly told me that as an artist, that there's a market for the woman market that is 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 a, is a un, it's like there's no there's no limit on this market, right? You just got to know how to tune everybody else out and talk to them directly and be able to, you know what I mean? So what I learned is that there's no way in hell that I need to put out a tape that does not have at least three songs or something like that, at least three, four songs for the women because it matters to them. You know what I'm saying? Women listen to music for a little different reasons than most men listen to music. You know what I'm saying? Whether if it's they like their mind or they think they're attractive. You know what I'm saying? It's a little different. But you have to. You got to use your friends. Instead of getting mad, you got to use your friends and your family and the people close to you to try to understand what it is that they like and how the fuck you can get on their range. Like, what is it that you can make to get it if it's important to you? You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm riding with my homeboy and he like Gucci, well, I don't really rap like Gucci, but instead of me thinking like that, I should be thinking like, damn, Gucci beats fire. You know what I'm saying? Gucci shit, they can dance to it in the club. You got to be able to pick up on these things to get to the next level, right? And that's step two, in my opinion, because I'm just giving you the way I see it. Step three in the tunnel is when now you done been dreaming so long and you have been on your shit so long, right? That now you don't see no light behind you and you don't see no light in front of you. So now you in darkness in your dream. But you're not a failure at this phase. You just can't see no light behind you. And step three is the second place. This is the second phase where the rest that made it past phase one, they don't make it out of this phase three. Because once you once people get to the point where we walking in our dreams or whatever we want in life, and we hit that part of the tunnel when they get complete, when it's darkness, and we don't know what the fuck is in front of us, and we can't see what's behind us, this is the part where humans, a natural man, just stops and he turns around in his life and his goals. It's the reason why we don't accomplish our dreams, right? And in this phase of life, on the more simplistic level, this is where, like, your kids, I'm getting older, I shouldn't be doing this. People are going to beat you down, telling you, like, man, you need to get that up, man, da 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 It's that phase in real life. You know what I'm saying? With everything against you, where you feel like, man, I got these bills, I got this going on, like, yo... I want you to understand the most important part of this when people talk to me and the, the best game I could ever give you about staying on your shit to get to where you want to be at is being able to truly, you know what I'm saying, trust yourself, you know what I'm saying? Because in that phase, most people going to turn around and go back because even though they can't see no light, they know that they know that they can go backwards because they know that it's light that way. Meaning that they know if they turn around, and go back to living that regular life or go back to living in existence and not dreaming, at least they know what's over there. But a very small percentage in phase four going mass on stage three, going to get themselves together. Because you in, th in stage three in that tunnel, most people going to stay still and they're going to be thinking and scared. Uh, Two percent going to be able to keep walking in the dark. Because they truly believe at this phase, only those who truly believe that they have a shot and can do this shit will make it to that point, you know what I'm saying? Meaning that at that phase for me, when everything, that's when the world closed and everybody telling you you bugging, everybody saying like, yo, you fucked up, like, man, come on, bro, you don't think you too old, you doing this shit, or come on, you got this going on, or come on, or this, this, and that, this, this, and that. 
you have to be like, yo, you have to be resilient. See, I was a ball player first. So the first thing my coaches taught me growing up playing all over the country was mental toughness and resilience. Y'all have no idea. See, I think differently from most people because at the end of the day, I had black coaches. We was them niggas in Jersey and AAU. But we had coaches that we would always be late, right? So every, every time we drove to another state, most of the time, we did not get the stretch. And so we'd be down 20 at halftime. And that coach be talking shit to the other team like, yo, you know, as soon as we get loose, this game over. So we got so used to it that we was going state to state, you know what I'm saying? And we was playing and we was coming back from 20 every tournament. So what I learned as a youth was that I could being down 20 was circumstance. It wasn't the end of the game. See, it's two types of ball players and, and, and basketball is life. Or team, it's two types of teams and mentalities. It's the type that 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 want to win, but there's there's teams that's good teams, but when they get down by twenty or thirty, everybody get mad at each other. See, this teamwork. This is why I, what makes me in the streets or what music make people hard to work together. Seeing sports, let's say we a good team, but we play this team that's not even ranked, and they beating us by thirty points. Most teams, 95% of the teams are going to that locker room, the guard, the, the, the players will start arguing with each other. They don't want to listen to the coach. They feel embarrassed. They out of whack. The great teams, the well-coached teams, the teams with mental toughness, they when they get in that locker room, they're not mad at each other. The only thing they in the locker room doing is holding everybody accountable. This is what's not happening. Like the guards and they're telling the big men, like, man, all I need you to do is do your fucking job. And the big men like, all right. But I need you to do your fucking job and pass that ball and stop shooting them stupid ass shots. And if we can find an agreement, see, I had coaches that like we were such men on the court playing ball when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? That our coaches then we down 20, he'd just come in the locker room and look at us like, feel me? Even at Broughton, when I played, when I came down and played at Broughton and won the championship, we was down here and Coach Farrell would say some shit in certain games, he just would walk out. Because at the end of the day, it's in the players. You know what I'm saying? So it's important when I say in that phase where the hardest part that you got to deal with is the fact that the people that's closest to you are not going to believe in what the fuck you talking about. You know what I'm saying? Your baby mama don't care, don't want to hear that rap shit. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? And if you're a female that rap, your baby father, your dad, your cousin, some of them don't want to hear that shit. You're a woman. You're supposed to be in here taking care of kids and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be your number one deterrent in this shit in life. And a lot of people can't really deal with that factor of life. Because they can't deal with they self. And they can't deal with the fact that I'm mad at the end of the day that they're not willing to push away from the group. See, I learned, I've learned that most people fail because you're not willing to say, fuck the group. You know what I'm saying? Because in society, or we feel like we need, we, as humans, we earn for group attention. Right? But you learn as you get older, that's a part of low self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? We need, we want to be a part of the group. But the group is the true sickness if the group if the group as a whole is fucked up and we following the group, then all we doing is abandoning the things that's best for us. You know what I'm saying? We all want to be accepted. See, this is the reason why I say when we younger, from the time we like kids all the way till we like 25, a lot of times, if I know you or you should know your friends, like that's who they that's who they, they show the world. When they get in their mid-20s, 30s, 40s, a lot of these people fan out to be who, who they really are. You know what I'm saying? In life, this is who they really are. So you got to be able to realize when when I say to unlock your dreams, first of all, you got to have work ethic. It's a lot of niggas out here with talent who be talking this shit and, and be talking this shit. I watch them every day, but I know they don't got no work ethic. And your talent can carry you but so far. Even if you're a nigga that can just go in the studio and make attractive records. You might can make them records that make niggas dance, but to the, to the niggas, the real music niggas, we not impressed and we just like, okay, nigga, what else? You know what I'm saying? Vice versa. So, it's a lot of people that say all of this shit, and it's a, and, and then right now, in the era we live in, right, like niggas who, in the age of, of, of 10 to 30, niggas feel like they, everybody calling themselves goats around the world. Nigga, you ain't putting enough fucking work to be a goat yet. I don't want to hear no goat talk from nobody until niggas 40. You know what I'm saying? Put your fucking work in. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing that be making me look at shit sideways. Like, look, at the end of the day, bro, you got niggas out who been in the field. Me and niggas was out here in this field. On these street corners, really living our dreams, selling music, going against the grain, not working our jobs, standing on a corner, knowing what it feel like for niggas to look down on us while we really trying to push culture. See, 
That's why I say only a few can really relate to the real grinders. The whole world, when we, when we in the club, and them records come on in the club, and they talking about real nigga shit, everybody in the club or the bar going to get hyped because everybody want to believe they a real nigga. The truth is, only 2% of y'all in that club really about that shit. And not even on no gangster shit. Real and killing and murdering those all different avenues. We done smurred the lines of this shit, right? And all of this is go back to unlocking your talent. Unlocking your talent ain't like sounding like little baby. Feel me? I be tired of that shit. I tell a lot of people come to me and they play their people. They'll come to me and they be like, yo, this my people's. And I'll listen and I'll be like, yo, they got skills, but like, yo, you want my opinion? I mean, somebody close to y'all niggas gotta start telling y'all, like, you know, in order to be recognized as that nigga, you gotta bring something new to the table, meaning that you still, you still need to be able to know the styles of the era and the, of what came before you and now. So you need to have that on the table. But you need to have a part of you that's unique so that when people buy your product, your clothing, your music, your invention, whatever the fuck, that it's gonna stand out. You know what I'm saying? So your number one, like, let's talk business for a second. I see a lot of people that are just artists that sell clothes, like me, and that do all of this stuff, and we all doing what we supposed to be doing. But if you can't still maintain your artistry while doing this shit, then you kind of missing your point. If you're an artist who sell clothes, you are different from just a regular vendor who sell clothes. A regular vendor who sell clothes, his clothes has to really speak for him and have to be good quality. You feel me? But if you're an artist, your clothes need to be good quality too. But the fact that you're an artist and that you dope, your clothes are worth more money than a nigga who just sell clothing. Right? See, in business, as, a, as an artist, you are, you are two companies in one now. So now you are buy. You know what I'm saying? You're a buy company. You know what I'm saying? You have two sides of your company. A person who just sell clothing, he's a single self-organism business. And meaning that his clothes can be better than yours, and he can still sell and I'll sell you. But he needs you if you a dope artist. And not you personally. He needs a, he needs somebody like you. A nigga who sell clothes, he don't need a rapper, but nigga, he needs a rapper. If he can get a dope rapper singing somebody popular to real his shit, not just rappers, but somebody popular in the street, the way his shit and take mad pictures in it, his worth goes up. You feel me? So if you sell clothes, then you the rappers around you, you need to pick a nigga that got dope videos and you need I've been saying this for years. Just like if you're a beat maker, you need to pick a beat maker, a rapper, to attach your motherfucking self with. That's dope. Not all of them just the ones you dope. You're a cameraman, same thing. If you're a cameraman, you need dope artists to help your brand. If you're a rapper, you need dope cameramen. But more than just cameramen, you need cameramen and you need producers. And you need engineers if they're not the same. You know what I'm saying? So, the rapper needs... Technically needs other jobs, but if the but as the artist or not just the rap as the artist or the creator, if you if you sell clothing as a as a side attachment to your business because it just you know it helps you sell your brand. You could be a public speaker and sell clothing. You know what I'm saying? Yo, please yeah, share this uh, for me, y'all. But you could be you can sell clothing. So I express to my friends and people I know that I have you out here. Selling clothing and you're an artist, yo. The most important factor of you selling these clothing is your fucking music. So I call my homeboys and I be like, yo, I call my nigga. I say his name is my nigga. I call my nigga. I said, bro, I'm proud of you, my nigga. I'm proud of you, sis. But you slipping. What you mean? Because if you're not in the studio, then your clothing is only worth the fabric. You know what I'm saying? And I keep expressing. Remember, that same t-shirt you selling, Nick was getting 90 for that shit. Why? Because he understood a couple things. He understood business, he understood profit, and he understood his influence. You know what I'm saying? As a rapper, I can get more for my I, like my nigga, he can get more for this OTG shirt than the average cold nigga. The average cold nigga probably can get 20. He gotta force it because he gotta get you to fuck with the brand. The rap nigga OTG, my nigga loyalty, if the fans fuck with him, they're going to pay him this 30, this 40 for this shirt or whatever because it come with an album and shit like that. He ain't got to work as hard as you clothing selling nigga. But, he, but at the same time, like I would tell my nigga, he need to understand this clothing shit. See, a lot of people come to me and I know they be fucking me. They be like, man, I know rap shit your number one avenue. I know that clothing shit not important. Nah, -uh, nigga. I, we do this shit too. I ain't just doing clothing because I'm trying to get over on a customer like, yo, I'm a rapper. I want you to buy my album. Nah, I want you to fuck with my clothing too. You know what I'm saying? If you don't even know I rap, I want you to buy a shirt because you think they dope. You get the music for free. 
See, that's what I mean. If if you out here and you got clothing machines and you doing all of this shit and you sewing and doing all that shit, I'm proud of you. But if you a rapper, you failing. Because for every shirt you sold and for every dress or whatever you made and, and it didn't come with your album, you killed yourself. Right? Remember I told you that you was a byproduct. Now you got two businesses. See, if you're the artist and the clothing maker, you're a byproduct. But if you're the artist, the clothing maker, the beat maker, the rapper, the engineer, now you a five-dimensional artist. And in hip-hop, rappers is one-dimensional on average. They don't see the importance of making the beats. If, if we was making shirts, it's the equivalent of the person who make the clothes not understanding the equivalent of designing the shirt. Like, I got the idea, but I'm going to send somebody else to do it. You know what I'm saying? And in the production, like, the, well, the beats would be, like, you making the shirt yourself. The engineering would be your design, the logo. If you do all of this, you kill them. Because, see, if you if you go into a third party to get your clothes, you paying money, but nine times out of ten, they making profit, so they probably getting, if you, whatever they charging you, they more than likely going to be making, like, Five, three, four, five dollars each shirt off you. So if you do this shit yourself and you play the game right, see, it's a problem when you know business at the end of the day. Niggas don't know business. When we dealing with business, you, you gotta always express to people like, look, man, you can go, you gotta be, you gotta be a businessman. You need to buy these shirts by the thousands. You buy these shirts by the thousands, you getting these bitches by like a dollar a piece. You ain't gonna argue. Now, not only are you gonna make your customer that's you, them artists or the people that you making shirts for happy, because you just made their price, you done cut their price in half for five dollars, and you done just got them, you done made five hundred percent. So you done you done times your money by five by by just spending that that couple thousand dollars on them shirts. And then when you selling to people, you turn those five racks into fifteen racks. Like this, cause niggas coming, everybody want you cheaper than everybody. And it's the same shit that you were just doing for for, for for whatever. Or if your shirts was fifteen dollars you get from your man's, if he do it, he can sell it to you for ten. And still made five dollars. And now you can sell it to the customer and still you make that shit double. You you can make what he made. But see, that's business at the end of the day. But niggas don't want to do business right. M motherfuckers want to go and buy 40 shirts. Niggas want to go in the streets and buy a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Nigga, you you not a hustler, no, nigga. Simple. That's why they try to express to y'all that niggas in the streets that transition to business be the best businessmen because they understand it, right? And then unlocking your talent, the other part is sacrifice. 99% of the niggas who in this game right now, a lot of niggas who rap today, they got a little bag with them. So the question is, now a lot of niggas did come from nothing. But see, the true talent and your true art and your true skill set come from you on your downtime, not from you being up. You know what I'm saying? Remember, niggas want to be up. Oh, I'm balling, I'm balling, I'm balling. Nigga, it's more niggas struggling on planet Earth than it is that's balling. So the nigga who, the nigga see, and then at the same time in music, men, you be like, yo, man, I'm too hard. Nigga, you know what make niggas your fans? It's, it's you being vulnerable, my nigga. The fan be like, damn, I'm a real nigga. Shit, I, I be down sometime too. Shit, I love women too. Uh, you feel me? So it's like in this dream shit, you got to sacrifice. Sacrifice like, I only got $100. My bills pay, but I only got $100. I can go buy me some, some weed. I can go snip me some coke. I can go out here and trick out at the bar and buy chicks drink. Or I can take this money and I can go to the, I can write, I can find me a dope song and I can write it and I can take 25 of this, go get me some oodles and noodles because I'm young, go get me the shit I need, peanut butter jelly sandwiches, and I take 75 to the studio and go to my man's and try to get a beat and record a song. The niggas who doing that, spending the money that they don't got, those are the niggas who gonna get more out of their art. You know what I'm saying? There's no such thing as success without sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? No matter how hard artists work to be better than each other, you'll never get what the next man did without his fast. You know what I'm saying? That man fasted. Like, you know, I used to always tell my homeboy or a couple of my homeboys that's not around me as much no more is that, look, I used to tell them all the time, you don't expect that man's, if, you didn't, if you're not willing to do the work that man did and sacrifice what that man sacrificed, then don't expect that man reward. And as the dreamers, when we give shit to people, we're not helping them. So even like with me right now in my life, like, yo, I know that I'm, I'm going to help certain people. 
But it's only the the people that I really feel like are humble. Not, not I, I don't. Not, I ain't talking. I just want. I want you to understand. Niggas who humble. You feel me? Like niggas when you meet them, these like I know street niggas who gangsters. But when they meet you, it's like yo, what up, bro? And they humble. Those the niggas, cause that's I'm sitting in there, I'm out there in the streets, and the niggas that met me who taught me how to engineer and shit, I was like that. That's why they gave me the shit that they wouldn't hand. I'd be like, bro, why y'all teach me this? Cause you humble, bro, and you listen. So the people that's gonna listen and that's humble, those are people I'ma fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Those are people that I'ma give a little more to. I don't care what you affiliated with. You know what I'm saying? And that's real shit on some talent shit. You know what I'm saying? Two niggas that I really think is humble. I'm going to say their name on some real shit. And I know, I don't know how niggas feel about both of them. That's not my, that ain't my business. But I'm going to tell you two niggas that's some humble ass street niggas when they come out of this music shit. Bundy Streets and The Shooter. I'm going to say their name again. Bundy Streets and The Shooter. Those are two niggas that I know when they come down to this music shit, they put everything aside. And when they come to the table, these niggas come to the table like men. You know what I'm saying? If your energy right, niggas gonna help you. Just like me and niggas like Tap, when we was younger, niggas helped us. You know what I'm saying? So it's our job to get back to the artists in the city and try to give them, for, for those who got the mind who really want to do this and really want to go further, they can. You know what I'm saying? And but unlocking your talent is about sacrifice, not giving up, isolating yourself, sticking to the goal, and no matter what, don't ever stop writing. And don't ever, if you're a rapper, if you're an inventor, don't ever stop working. Failure is your friend. If it take you five years to figure out the measurements to get it right so that it float, then so what? Get that shit right. You know what I'm saying? And make it happen. But the only true path to greatness is repetition. Steph Curry, that nigga has shot a quarter million jump shots before he ever made it to college. I guarantee you. He was shooting with damn near blindfolders on and sunglasses. He was shooting jumpers with gloves on that he couldn't even grip the ball while they was throwing it to him. You can't be great, not accidental. Nobody's born great. Now say talent, talent, what he call natural talent is the ability to get better and to be real with yourself. Lala, if you don't be quiet, man, she back here fucking with me growling and shit. Look at that. Go on with yourself. So, yeah, she be moody and shit. But the, in this dream shit, you got to be willing to sacrifice. If you're not going to sacrifice for yourself, why the fuck is anybody else? In the mentality today that has to stop, see, the youth, y'all need to understand that y'all spoiled in the aspect that technology is all around you, but y'all really don't respect it. Y'all will never respect this technology like niggas who in their 30s and 40s do, and 50s, because... We, we knew what it was like to grow up without this means. Y'all young niggas think y'all something. And I respect y'all and I'm proud of y'all. But if we had the shit y'all had, it'd be a different game right now. See, right when we was growing up, it was a grown man's game. And then when we got grown, it became a young man's game. And it ain't because y'all better. It's because y'all more easily controlled. And, and when you young and you 17, 18... I ain't got no kids. I don't know much. Like, what I know about finance. So it's easy for me to put money in your pocket. And when I give you a little money, you're going to rebel against your mama and do all this crazy shit. And yet can't nobody tell you nothing. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, y'all. So, that's the reality. You know what I'm saying? Now, the second thing that I was going to talk to y'all about today, before I get out of here, was the next one, cyber. And, like, the AIs. Like they are in America and all across the world, they are creating drones. There's drones, there's cyber attacks on satellites. Like the world is actually at war. And America not really the winner, they're not leading this AI shit. So not only are the weapons that they build and are AI built, meaning that the, the, the drones or the computers make the choices for who they shoot, what buildings to shoot, they gotta make choices on their own. And that's dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that it's idiotic. But that's the war that we're going to realize that we about to face is that we're going to wake up and we'll see Russia, China, drones in the sky, crashing in the shit, shooting at people. And that's that's the crazy. And I don't mean to just put it on them, but that's the type of that's the type of warfare we're going to deal with. And y'all need to understand that. I hope y'all paying attention to this technology shit, because this technology shit is so important. 
that the world is changing fast. So warfare that we know, like weapons and shit, the way that we used to, shit different. They got, listen, they got submarines that ain't got nobody on them now. They got, they got little helicopters that um, Israel got that they, basically they send like hundreds of them shits up in the air. Like they shoot out of like rockets. They look like rockets, but they're actually little like machines and they fly. They shoot out and then like hundreds of them fly around and they look for like, they look for like defense systems and shit like this. And then when they find them, they crash into them and blow up. They turn into rockets when they, when they dive. This is the type of shit that they on. So I just want y'all to be aware of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, I'm going to bring y'all videos. But I want y'all to be aware of what the fuck going on in the world right now and be conscious of what the world is bringing to the table. You know what I mean? I can hold y'all on this morning. I'm getting out of here. BH.